watched your friend's video about 27 states in two weeks. Sorry about the wind noise on the microphone here. I just saw the bunny rabbit. He ran up there. So he survived another day. That guy didn't catch him yesterday for his dinner. Or if he did, it was a relative of his. another video on there about the hand of God over Hume. I don't think it's about the, the Scottish philosopher, although it might be. It's about some place. In, uh, I don't know, I guess it's California or Oregon. I should look it up. Shouldn't I? I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, I'm getting too many videos on uh, American I don't know who that person is. I get the feeling it's, it's one or very few people. It's absolutely incredible. And I feel so bad about not, not watching them. I don't know, there's not much, nobody says anything in that video, it's interesting, 27 states and the narrator gives you a feel for it, but it sounds like nobody said anything, well I'm not surprised, you know, well, I was going to tell you a story about the trip that I organised. I think I kind of organised it for a company, a travel, adventure travel company in Portland or somewhere, or Seattle. I think they're in Seattle. Mountain Madness, and I was in Bolivia working for a, an Australian guy called Jeff Sandiford, and I used to go up to the West of Palabamba Mountains, and I'll put a, a Google Maps link in the description of this video. I used to go up there and kind of explore because it's a bit of a wild, wilder bit of Bolivia. It's really nice up there. You, you see very few people and very, very few tourists. Maybe if I sit down there, it won't make so much noise. It's not really comfortable though. So I used to go up there 
and I kind of worked for Jeff. He, he did tours occasionally and he needed people to help out and I used to help. I was a driver for one of his, one trip he did with some Polish guys, my God. And then I was a kind of, I don't know, spare part on another trip he did for some European tourists. They're all German and Swiss and French. And the reason I was thinking about this was I was thinking about the, the social dynamics of, of long, long trips. That trip was something like two weeks. And people were complete strangers. They all booked on this. Uh, they booked with this expensive Swiss travel agent. German travel agent, whatever they were, and uh, and then they they paid their thousands and thousands of euros for their trip, and then they went, and it's up to you to make sure that the the trip goes well. You've kind of got some incentive. You. It's, it's free market social structures. It's a bit like moving into a gated community. All this because because of David Lynch's song of the day, which is something like what is it? Alone at last. The world's full of these things. People looking for like-minded spirits and um, kindred spirits. I hope that comes out. <laughs> Please, you know, you evangelists, you can tell me that God is a he and he's up in heaven and he sent me a hummingbird. He? Right. You people are fucking out to lunch, I tell you. You're out to lunch. You really need to sort yourselves out. That language just... Oh, God, it's nauseating. I hear people talking like that, and I just... I just want to switch off. I want out. So this mountain madness trip, I used to go up to Palabamba and I also knew this American called Amy, Amy O'Toole. Oh, I'm, she told me never to mention her in my blog and I told her I wouldn't. But there you go, I'm mentioning you again, Amy. Sorry about that. Amy worked at the uh, the cooperative school in uh, Calacotta in La Paz. It's down near the the US Embassy. No, it's not. The US Embassy is much higher. It's, it's way down the bottom. But it's where quite a lot of the other embassies are. 
but the US, British and German embassies are all in a different place together. Interesting, huh? I guess you've got to ask Presidente Peñaranda about how that works. Chile, Bolivia is a mad place. I'll put a link to that in the description. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Ilimani, I climbed Ilimani too. But damn, I left behind my swastika and my Union Jack and my Stars and Stripes. What was wrong with me? <laughs> but instead some Brazilians came up and stuck a Brazilian flag in the summit. And that's, that's what I saw when I got up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got more war criminals? <laughs> Tell you what, stick to fantasy. Don't, 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 don't look into history. It's, it's sick. It's fucking sick. Just stay with fantasy. I mentioned um, Miral Souls. Miral Souls are these amazing pieces of Inca jewelry that you find. Sometimes they've, they're beautifully engraved. Sometimes they're made of silver, and sometimes copper, and sometimes bronze. And um, they're, they're like hat, they're like great big hat pins or something. They're, they're, they're long needle-like things with quite a sharp point on. And then a f the top's been hammered flat into a disc about the size of a, a quarter. Most of them are like that. Except I bought one. <laughs> I think it was, I, I had thought it was fake when I saw it. It was, it was pure copper, but it was ginormous. It was about, it was over, I'd say it was over a foot long. Huge, heavy copper thing. And then there's a hole punched in the, in the disc. And, um, now everybody says it so that you could look at the sun without burning your retina. Um, I think you can kind of calculate <coughs> that that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. Um, if you looked at the sun through that thing, you would burn your retina. I think it was. For, I think it was for looking at the moon during an eclipse. During an eclipse of the sun. If it was for looking at anything, there's another. There's a better theory that I can come up with. Was that the, the whole population could project could project images of gods onto rocks and water and maybe onto the moon. I'm going with that one. The Atlantean interpretation. I'm sick of facts. Fucking sick of facts. Everyone's got the facts and we've all got the information. Shit. <laughs> so, where was I?
Look, God sent me a fly. Some beautiful lichen. Seems like that lichen needs the shade. I'm not sure if this is alive or not, the black. Maybe it's dead. Really nice. I can't see the screen, it doesn't seem to be compensating the exposure. God also sent me a hummingbird poo. So, um, I thought a Amy would, 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 would like to climb with me and I thought we could do a trip, we could go and climb some mountains. She was always doing really kind of extreme stuff. She was a kind of keep fit, I guess she still is, kind of keep fit nut. And, um, And she used to do these these uh, climb Wana Patosi in five hours type of adventures. She she did it for, for fitness, not for enjoyment or anything. And I thought of trying to get her into climbing just to be in the mountains. So I used to go up to Palabamba and I, <clears throat> I explored quite a lot the west of Palabamba, which you don't, you don't read about in the guidebooks, you don't read about trekking routes, you don't read about anything up there. Everything goes east of the mountain. And the east side's not very nice. It's been, there's lots of mining development up there and it's not very pretty. The west is much more beautiful. And there's this climber, this uh, Swiss climber, French climber called Alain Massilli, who lives in Bolivia. And he, he's a kind of authority on the Palabamba. He's taken some nice photographs, he publishes books of photos, and he also runs trips. He has a kind of climbing company that takes people on trips. But he didn't. Uh, probably knows about the west of Alabama, but he didn't publish it. But it's much more beautiful. And there's some really beautiful mountains, snow-covered... I don't know how you call them, what you, how you describe this. I mean, they, they're just really beautiful, snowy peaks. So the next thing I knew was that 
Jeff was running this mountain madness trip, which was a kind of combined multi-sport adventure holiday thing. They, they, they brought these people out from the States. And, um, they did trekking, climbing, downhill mountain biking, and probably some sort of water sport canoe type thing as well, down further down. They organized it between Jeff and his friends. Different companies did different parts of the trip. And I ended up kind of organizing the climbing part. And unfortunately, they wouldn't let me, they didn't tell me long enough in advance to enable me to even scout the route. It was an, it was an East Apolabamba route and it was in the guidebooks and everything, but um, I'd never done it. If Jeff had just come to me a couple of weeks before and said they want to do East Apolabamba, can you, you know, I would have gone, I would have jumped in a bus, gone up there and spent a week wrecking it and it would have all gone much better, but it didn't. It all went wrong because the guide had never been there before. And it didn't go very well, the clients didn't get their, their climbing in. In the end I got penalised for it, Jeff didn't pay me. the highly paid <laughs> mountain madness guide from from Seattle a fellow called Cheyenne Rohani or something I think he's Iranian he wrote a letter to Jeff complaining about me and Jeff didn't pay me or he docked money off I, he ended up paying me a hundred dollars or something for two weeks two weeks work or a week's work. Really hard work, getting up early in the morning, making food, packing, organizing, packing mules. A lot of stress. Cooking the food. Buying the food. tech people probably all ex Microsoft people who've taken their money and done startups and stuff so I'm sorry I haven't told you the story it's kind of tedious Amy will get very upset. back from that trip Amy was Amy rented her car out to Jeff no that was another trip that was another guy guy on his own another trip I did with an American and I drove and cooked and Jeff's Jeff's guide Pedro Choque is a Sorotenia guy he was the guide and I was the cook and driver and I enjoyed that. The 
of the car within a bad way. The car hadn't been maintained properly. The alternator packed up <clears throat> so you couldn't, it wasn't recharging the battery. made it pretty dangerous on those roads you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't stop you, you couldn't even uh, let it idle with your foot off the accelerator because it would stall and then it probably wouldn't start again And then on the way back, we discovered that the uh, the steering column had come so loose that it was about to it was about to dis disconnect. But it didn't. So that's all right. Another thing I was thinking coming up here was <clears throat> how how stratified society is with ages and age groups. All those people on that trip were around the same, looked to be about the same age. I suppose that's kind of natural. At different ages we have different interests. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure it has to be like that. It's all about effort. To have a relationship with anybody, you've got to be prepared to put in the effort. I'm sure there's always a reason why the effort's worth putting in because you don't know what, how the relationship's going to develop in the future. So I suppose the interesting problem is why, why do people stop putting the effort in at certain points? Not a very coherent video, is it? Right. But I am looking forward to seeing your video of that trip. I saw the I saw the little fragments of it that you did, and those those were really really good. Those were brilliant. So 
please do your video. You still there? <laughs> that was the best bit, it was fantastic. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> of course I'm here. <laughs> so I think a bit of research into the the Native American history of of Hume would be in order and that's what I'll, I'll look a bit up I'll try and look something up there's bound to be a bunch of jaguar bird videos that are relevant another thing related to that is would be to look up the the place where Christopher McCandless died and look up the the Native American history of that region thing I didn't mention about this mountain madness trip is that the bit we did was all was all above 4,000 meters altitude and that's higher than the summit of Mount McKinley so all the time you're at very high altitude so people are kind of having to manage their metabolisms it's very it's quite tricky because your your digestive ability is reduced significantly. You've got to try and keep your stomach in order but at the same time as deal with the low oxygen pressure and low low air pressure and low low blood oxygen level. Cooking at that altitude isn't that easy. You have, to be spe you have to do special things to cook pasta, for instance, because if you cook pasta in water that's boiling at 80, 86 degrees or whatever temperature it boils at there, the pasta just turns to, to wet mush before it's cooked. <laughs> <laughs> 